Hi folks, and welcome back to my old Kentucky vlog part two. We are still in Hygenville, Kentucky, going to finish up in the Abraham Lincoln Museum, and then we're going to go to the National Park, the Abraham Lincoln birth site, and I think you'll really enjoy it. One of the things here at the museum that I wanted to highlight before we leave it is the wax figures representing General Robert E. Lee, General Ulysses S. Grant, and the surrender of Confederate forces at the Appomattox Courthouse. Now this, for all intents and purposes, in April of 1865, ended the Civil War. General Lee's forces had been surrounded, and he felt there was nothing else to do, and to prevent further bloodshed, he would surrender his forces. Some fighting continued on, but for all intents and purposes, the Civil War had come to a close. And now we have this portrait of Robert Todd Lincoln, who was the eldest and only son of Abraham and Mary Todd Lincoln to reach adulthood. He went on to quite the life himself in service to our country. He was the Secretary of War. He was also a minister to Great Britain. This particular table here actually was belonged to the Todd family. And I think that's a really nice piece to belong here in the museum. And like everything else, was donated. Thanks for watching the museum piece. Now let's move on to the park. So now we're going to go on to the National Park, the historic birthplace of Abraham Lincoln, and I'll get into it in a little bit about how we know for sure that this is the site of Abraham Lincoln's birth. Now this actually used to belong to a single family before it became a national park. They held on to it for many years, and the first part of our tour would normally be here at the Visitor Center, but they're observing 15 people in and out at a time, so they recommended that we check out the rest of the park. And so that's what we're gonna do, and then we'll come back. So the family that I mentioned, these is representations of the homes that they lived in. One of the things that you will do here is walk, walk, walk. So make sure that you bring some good walking shoes. We enjoyed a lot of the different trails, and of course going up to the monument that you'll see here in just a little bit. And I thought this flag was really nice. Now here, this is the reason we know that Abraham Lincoln was born here. This sinking spring that he spoke of, that his uh, parents spoke of, he knew that he was born on the hilltop above the sinking spring. And that's what we're gonna go look at right now. This is the spring that the Lincoln family would get their water from and you will notice when we go down in it, and it of course is right here across from the monument itself to uh, where we think their home would have been, you'll, you can feel the temperature change as we go down here. Pretty surreal to think that virtually nothing has changed about this area that we're standing in right now for more than 200 years. Now this historical point of interest I found very fascinating talking about the chestnut tree and how important it was. The wood of the chestnut tree has anti-rot tendency. So it was used for everything, mainly, of course, in homes. The chestnuts themselves could be eaten, but a blight that was actually imported into this country, it didn't start in the United States, nearly wiped out the chestnuts completely. But through proper conservation and ways that they have not been able to completely destroy the blight, but they've been able to manage it, it was able to make a comeback. Now, one of the trails that we first start out on has a very important marker that used to be here, the Great Boundary Oak. It was one of the last living things that actually could tie itself to Abraham Lincoln. It died out in 1976, and we believe it was about 30 years old when Abraham Lincoln was born, and it sat just about 150 yards from the Lincoln family home.
after quite a bit of walking on this hot, hot day. The end of our trail actually takes us up the hill and we come out right here at the side entrance of the memorial to Lincoln's birth site. So we're gonna go around the front side and give you the entrance coming in and then we'll talk a little bit later about the significance of some of the features on the outside. People from all walks of life gave anything they had. Boy Scouts, to teachers, to doctors, to business owners, gave everything that they could to raise the money to have something denoting the importance of the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln. Now, you'll, first thing you'll be asking, is this the log cabin of Abraham Lincoln? Now, unfortunately, it's not. It actually was a traveling log cabin that there were two of them. One they said was the birthplace of Jefferson Davis, the Confederate president. One was the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln and they would tour like we might go see a county fair now. When they put this one back together, they think they may have used logs from both. But still, over not too long ago, they still thought this might be Abraham Lincoln's cabin or at least have some remnants of Abraham Lincoln's cabin. But when they did uh, a core sample, it come out that this cabin is from sometime in the 1860s. So it did travel the country as Abraham Lincoln or Jefferson Davis's cabin, but it, it could not have been either one. But it's still a very significant piece of history and it has a great home here. So another neat aspect of this memorial to President Lincoln is it was put in place beginning in 1909, so 100 years from the birth of President Lincoln. So they worked on it between 1909 and 1911. So that puts this monument here a full 11 years before the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. that was put in place in 1922. And now we look at the steps that actually lead up to the birthplace memorial. 56 steps. Now, does that ring a bell? It probably does, because I know a lot of you are extremely smart. 56 steps. There were 56 years that Abraham Lincoln lived before he unfortunately was assassinated in 1865. And last but certainly not least, we're going to go back to the Visitor Center and check out what's there. I really like this first part of the Visitor Center as we see the statue of the Lincoln family, Thomas Lincoln, who was illiterate, who worked hard for everything that he had. He even worked side by side with people that were in bondage, with slaves. And that would go on to form his opinion of slavery to certainly influence that of his son. Uh, the Lincoln matriarch, Nancy Lincoln, who would pass away when Abraham Lincoln was just nine years old. Abraham and his sister also represented here. Now this is a, a very small museum. There is a, a great video, it's about 20 minutes long, discussing the life of the Lincolns here in Kentucky. Here we have the stone marking Thomas Lincoln Jr., the brother of Abraham Lincoln who passed away and whose grave was marked simply with that TL the bust of Teddy Roosevelt. Now, Teddy was here in 1909 for the dedication of the monument. You see the throng of people that were here to see that and for him to put the cornerstone in place. And you can see that here today. And I know I keep saying this about everything, but I, this is really one of my favorite pieces, the Lincoln Family Bible. It was really awe-inspiring to see this. Our next view gives us a glimpse into what it was like to live in that log cabin that we see represented here. The Lincoln family, unfortunately, a problem that happened a lot at the time, there was a dispute about the ownership of the Sinking Springs farm that the Lincolns had purchased. Well, the person that they purchased it from, there was a dispute that that person even owned the property. So they ended up having to leave. They rented out some property 
that is another historical site. We don't go to it this time in Hodgenville. We may come another time, but it's the uh, boyhood home. So it's where Lincoln would uh, live up until the age of seven when they would leave Kentucky. But there was a dispute on it as well. And so Thomas Lincoln had had enough. He said, enough with Kentucky and the family would move to Indiana. We see some of the tools of the trade that were used on the farm. And then now we see, which is pretty cool, the family lineage of the Lincolns. You can see the Lincoln family direct relations are the Wright brothers, Tennessee Williams, President Gerald Ford, the Bush family. Pretty interesting. So thank you so much for watching everybody. It means a great deal to me and the comments that I get and somebody saying, hey, you turned me on to this piece of history I didn't know. I really enjoyed that. That means the world to me. So I'd love to hear those things. I highly encourage you to come to Hodgenville, Kentucky if you get the chance. The people here are great. And it's really nice to reflect on some history that I didn't know a whole lot about. I'm familiar with the things that a lot of people are about Abraham Lincoln, but a lot of his history, uh, I didn't. I didn't realize his mother had died so young. I didn't realize his father died at 56, the same age that President Lincoln would die at. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for going along with us on the ride. Have a great day, everybody.